Amen. Amen. We'll be dancing in the spirit and we bless and honor God this morning. This is the day the Lord has made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. God's morning to one and God's morning to all. God's morning, Sister Michelle Tucker. God bless your daughter. God's morning to the grace and peace be unto you, Sister Carmen. God bless you. We bless God for each and every one of you <clears throat> that are here on our prayer line this morning. And it is with kingdom pleasure that we serve him. This is wonderful Wednesday. And this this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. <clears throat> Excuse me. We are glad among the living and not the dead. And so we thank God that we're here. Thank God for his grace. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for a peace that surpasses all understanding. And so we honor God for his righteousness. We honor God for his presence. Truly, the Spirit of the Lord is upon this prayer line this morning. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is. So we bless God for you. <clears throat> we pray you had a great weekend. We pray you had a productive weekend. We pray you had a good holiday. We pray that everyone is still safe and sound after the 4th of July. Amen. And <clears throat> the things that are going on in life right now, the episodes that are yet continue to are surmount in our lives, but yet we're still believing God. Whose report shall you believe? We believe the report of the Lord. For the name of the Lord is a strong tower whereby the righteous run in and they are saved. And so we thank God that we have a safety mechanism we have a built-in device called the Holy Ghost that leads and guides us to all truth. And so we're not nervous about things that are happening in society, in the land right now, in the universe right now, or in the world, uh, because we're in the world, but we're not of the world. And so we have to really know that we're truly a different fold of people hereby glorified by God. And so we bless and honor God for the position he places us in when we read his word, when we stand on the promises of God, when we allow his word to take root on the inside of us then we can uh, dispel the myths of the enemy, <clears throat> dispelling the myths and the lies of the enemy and don't allow it to take root in our lives. We don't let it grab a hold of us so much so that it's going to change our position or our thought process or our thought patterns in life. And so we bless and honor God that we, according to the word of God, that we can bring into captivity every thought that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. And so these thoughts and these thoughts of pandemic and these thoughts of panic and, and mayhem and frustrations and pains and diseases and infirmities, uh, we bring into captivity every thought that exalted itself against the knowledge of God. So God said that because uh, Jesus died, he died for us to live and then he came for us to have life more abundantly. He didn't come for us to be destroyed. He didn't come for us to be killed often. He didn't come for us to be uh, contaminated by things of life. And then just all of a sudden your life is stripped away from you. That's not the promises to him his word is yea and amen and so we stand on the promises of god and so we bless and honor god for having an affirmation and a confirmation and a full understanding as to who we are in this earth thy kingdom come that will be done in earth as it is in heaven and so we thank god for the division process that god has for us the dividing process that separates us from this world we thank god that we have the shield of faith that separates us from the world's um in your endos and the world's decisions about certain things. And so that shield of faith is that, that, that force field that God places around us to protect us, the hedge of protection that he has for us as believers. And so we just stand on the word of God. We stand on his word and we're not nervous about what is going on right now because we know that God is still in control. Regardless of the circumstances, God is still in control. And I believe God. What about you, Prayer Life family? I believe God. Excuse me. So we bless him this morning. On this prophetic prayer line, we bless God for you, for you, for you, and of course for you as well. I pray you had activities over the weekend, as I stated earlier, that were fun. Sometimes we just need to introduce ourselves or reintroduce ourselves to fun. We need to just get out of the normal sometimes and get out from reacting from all of the news and things that's being broadcast in our mindset and those things that we're digesting and ingesting, listening to the news and the media and so forth, and just go out and have some fun. Enjoy your family. Enjoy fun. Enjoy life in a safe way, in a safe environment, something that's conducive to where you're not placing yourself in harm's way and you're not going to be victimized by Satan by, using, uh, by not using wisdom. The Bible says that wisdom is the principal thing, and so we stand on the word of God. He gives us intuitiveness he gives us insight he gives us wisdom knowledge and understanding as to what to do and the holy ghost even says there's certain times uh, when you need to remember things he'll bring those things back to your remembrance even at that time so sometimes when we make mistakes the holy ghost is there for us to correct ourselves to line ourselves back up in the gates of righteousness to line ourselves up in the path of that god would have us to be and so we bless and honor god for the assistance and that that we depend on the holy ghost you need the holy ghost amen there was a song when i did radio we did 
hit radio over 10 years and I played my same uh, song, my theme song, Stay There Till You Get the Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost Power. You need it, you want it, did you get it? Well, you need to stay there until you get the Holy Ghost Power. And so we bless and honor God for the Holy Ghost Power. You need it, you need it, you need the Holy Ghost Power. This is what's missing in the world right now, the myth of the world, the, the thing that's uh, disconnecting us and disassociating us from the real power that God wants to introduce this world to is, is because the church has a form of godliness, but it's denying the power thereof. And so we as the ecclesia, the called out ones, we really need the Holy Ghost power. We really need to learn how to depend on him. He is the third person of the Trinity, the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Ghost. He is a person. Amen. It's not a it. It's not a, it, it, he's a person. And so we bless God that we have a real knowledge and a real understanding as to what his position is, who he is uh, in our lives of the believers. And we bless and honor God for that. Please like and share the page this morning, social media, if you would. I'd appreciate it if you would like and share the page. Uh, Facebook, I don't know how long you all are going to be here. I have a problem with my storage and my uh, my uh, electronic devices now. So we're going to try to get some more storage in there <clears throat> and it gets in place and it cuts it off. And so if, if, you, if you get cut off, please call the prayer line number at 712-432-0075. Access code 533510-POUND. If someone could place that on social media for me, I'd appreciate it. We're live on YouTube as well. So if you don't, if your Facebook blanks out, please go to my YouTube page, Dr. Loretta V. Harris, and we're live live on YouTube this morning as well. We're on our prayer line, conference call line. Again, it's 712-432-0075, access code 533510-POUND. Uh, if your phones will allow you to dial in, some of your phones have uh, situations that they block those uh, lines, calling them chat lines, but this is a prayer line. This is not a chat line. If someone will please place, place the number on our social media for those that get cut off this morning. If you get cut off on Facebook, it's because we don't have enough storage unit uh, in my devices. And, but I am on YouTube Live as well right now. So if you get cut off, go to YouTube or call in on our prayer line number. Amen. That being said, let's go ahead with the times before we get cut off. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you this morning for your love. God, we thank you for your kindness. Father, we thank you for your multitudes of tender mercies. And so, Father, I pray that your grace bestowed upon us this day on this wonderful Wednesday. I pray, Father, that you would use me as a vessel, as a conduit, Father, that will cause people to catapult into new levels of life. And, Father, we pulling away from frustrations and getting out of harm's way and get out of hurtful things and hurtful situations. Allow us to make better choices in life, Father. You said to choose you this day. And so, Holy Spirit, we ask that you would lead us this morning and we ask asking for your guidance. We ask asking for your directions and we ask you for a definitive, Father, a, a yes and an amen. And so, Father, we thank you in advance for what you're going to do and say on this prayer line. We command our day to day. There will be no incidents. There will be no accidents. There will be no hurt. There will be no harm and there will be no dangers and there will be no premature deaths. There will be no coronavirus breakouts on none of the people, Father, that listen to this video, that view the video under the sound of my voice. We take spiritual authority. We take authority over that thing, that, that pandemic. We take authority by the blood of Jesus. And so now, Father, we summon the angels with drawn swords to cut off every adversary, everything, Father, that does not resemble the power of the kingdom of God, that does not resemble the power of the cross. And we thank you in advance for what you're going to do in this prayer line this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God's morning. God's morning. No incidents, no accidents. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we're going to talk this morning uh, about the flip side of you, the flip side of you. When we're listening to, to even that that little connotation itself, that topic, the flip side of something. There's some things that have been used on one side and has not even been touched on another side. There's some things that have been abused on one side, <clears throat> but yet on the other side, it, it seems as if it's uh, great. It has no resemblance of any heartaches or pains. It doesn't have any, res uh, any resemblance of burning or anything like that. So say, for instance, if you have a pancake, you got a pancake or you got an egg. On one side, uh, you got a smooth surface. On the bottom, you got it where it's browning real nice, and it seems like it's, it's going to be fluffy. You can see it rising. You can see uh, something happening with the pancake. Uh, but the one that's on top that has not been flipped, you still have dough. You still have something that's not touched the frying pan yet. It's not touched the heat yet, and so it's in its normal state, so to speak. But the one on the other side is already browning. It's already getting ready to rise. It's already been introduced to the heat. It has a total different temperance than what the other side has. And so there's a part of 
of you that has a totally different temperance. There's a part of you that's never been touched. There's a part of you that's never been tainted. There's a part of you that, that's never been exposed to certain things in life. But that part that has, that's the part that we've exposed ourselves to elements and we've exposed ourselves to certain things in lives and we've exposed ourselves to disappointments and heartaches and failures and things in life that... Um, uh, seem to be not working in our favor sometimes, but yet still we've been exposed to those things. So it takes us it takes us to places that we don't want to go. It exposes us to things that we don't want to be around. And then we experience things in life that are totally different in life than what we would really ex uh, expect it to be at this particular time in life. Um, the sunny side up egg. The sunny side up egg is still cooking from the bottom, but on the top, the egg is still runny. It's still in a place where uh, it has not been touched yet. And so that's a part. But if you flip it over, then it's going to experience the same thing as such as the first one that uh, had the heat on it. So so we're looking at our lives right now that have not been flipped over. We want to talk to the flip side of you. We want to talk to that part that has not been tossed into the fire. We want to talk to that part that has not been dishuffled, dismayed. We want to talk to that one that, that doesn't understand, no, that has not been exposed to elements of life, that has not been exposed to hardship, that has not, do you know it's a part of you that it really hasn't been exposed to those things yet. And so we want to talk to that part in the Bible. You know, I always go Bible on my minister, Carla. Y'all know me. We always go Bible. God was talking to um, uh, the people of God at one time in the book of Acts chapter 7. And he was letting them know that they had a, a stiff neck, that they were hard-headed people. And he didn't understand why they just couldn't listen to him and just obey him. He said, you stiff necked people with uncircumcised hearts and uncircumcised ears. And you're just like your fathers. You always resist the Holy Spirit. Uh, was there ever a prophet that your fathers did not persecute? They ever killed those who predicted uh, the coming of the righteous one? Uh, and now you have betrayed and murdered him and you who have received the law uh, that was put into effect through angels, but have not obeyed it. There are some things that God just has a concern with us about prayer line family. And so he wants us to know, I want to use the flip side of you. I don't want to use the one that you were taught. I don't want to use the one that your fathers and your forefathers taught you certain things and, and that you now have ingrained uh, situations in your life uh, that, that really don't belong there. I want to use a part of you that's never been used before. Uh, we're looking at this morning, uh, the topic again is the flip side of you. I want to parallel this to the lifestyle of Saul, this man Saul. Saul uh, was a persecutor of the church. And in the, in, in the book of Acts chapter 8, and we're going to start with verse number 1, it talks about how he, uh, he did terrible, horrific things to the church and to the body of Christ. The Bible says on a great day, the persecution broke out against the church at Jerusalem. The Bible says that all except the apostles were scattered throughout Judea and throughout Samaria and godly men were burned. Uh, they were buried. Godly men were buried. Stephen and uh, mourned deeply for him. Saul began to destroy the church. Saul did what now? Saul destroyed the church. That was that person, a part of him that was a uh, wicked, the part of him uh, that had been uh, ingrained and taught how to hurt and how to harm. Going from house to house, he dragged off men and women and put them in prison. I want you to hear me now. I want you to hear me clearly. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. And Philip went down to a city in Samaria and he proclaimed the Christ is here. He proclaimed Christ is here. And when the crowds heard Philip and saw the mirac miraculous signs that he did, they all paid close attention to what he had said. With shrieks, evil spirits came out of many and many paralytics and cripples were healed. So there was a great joy in that city. Uh, at that time, uh, because people had been in a position in life where we talked about the flip side of you, they had been paralyzed. And, and at that time, they had uh, situations and evil spirits on the inside of them. That was that side of them. But now, so here Philip comes and he comes to do what? He comes to redirect all the things that's going on in their lives. And so he wants to use the other part of them that has not been tainted. He wants to use the other side of them that have not been malfunctioned. He wants to use the other side of them that has not been introduced to this devil. There is a part of you, hallelujah, that's been preserved by God. I call it a God pocket. It's a God pocket on the inside of you that God doesn't allow access to anybody but him. Uh, only God can have access to certain aspects of your life. Only God can have certain access to certain parts of your body. And so we have to know that everything has not been exposed to the elements and everything has not been burned and everything has not been tainted and everything has not been destroyed. So let's use the other side. Let's use the flip side of you this morning. The Bible says now, 
from time to time, uh, there was a man by the name of Simon that he had practiced sorcery in the city. And he was amazed at all the people of Samaria. He boasted that he was someone great and all the people, uh, both high and low, gave him their attention and exclaimed that this man is a divine power known as the great power. Here's the deceiver right now. So the flip side of him is that he had rule. The flip side of him is that he was the one in charge. The flip side of him was that everybody, he's, he's like E.F. Hutton. When I speak, everybody's going to be quiet and they're going to listen to me. This man had power. This man had authority. This man had influence. And so he was able to influence a lot of people on that side of who he was. They followed him because he had amazed them for a long time with his magic. Uh, but when they believed Philip, as he preached the good news of the kingdom of God, when they saw the miracle signs and wonders that began to follow this man that preached to God, the kingdom of God, the Bible says, and the name of Jesus Christ, that they were baptized, both men and women. And Simon himself believed and he was baptized. Then he began to follow Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and the miracles that he saw. That's the flip side. The same one that was all about himself, the same one that boasted that he was someone great, the same one that wanted everybody to listen to him, that he had something to say, that he had magic, he had power. But all of a sudden now, the flip side of him was introduced to something totally different. The flip side of him was able to ingest and be able to receive something that had never been done before. Have I a prayer line this morning? And so the Bible says that he was astonished himself and knowing that I didn't see this side of me. I didn't know that I could actually get rid of myself. I didn't know that I could actually not be so full of myself. I didn't know that I could actually be so full of pride that God began to minister to me in a different way. The Bible says when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And when they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Have you received the Holy Ghost? The flip side of you, are you in your natural kind of state of mind? Are you in your natural connotations or is there a supernatural visitation of the power of God that wants to now introduce himself to the real you? That wants you to see the real you? Are we in still in hardship? Are we still on the burning pan? Are we still in the frying pan where we need to be flipped over? Amen, somebody. But now we're burning and now we're in hardships and now we're in pains and now we're in agony and now we're in stress. Well, well, let's use the flip side of you, the side of you that's never been used before, the side of you that's never been introduced to this hardship, this struggle, this pangs of life. Have our prayer line this morning. And so the Bible says, well, here it is now. They prayed for them because they sent Peter and John. Because why? Because they were receptive to the word of God. They were what now? They were receptive to the word of God. He followed Peter, every, uh, Philip everywhere, astonished by the great signs and the miracles that he saw. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, have we accepted the word of God? Do we, Sister Angie, take God for face value? Or do we, are the ones we're the ones now we have to decipher everything, that we have to take, uh, take everything and try to tear it all apart other than just accepting the word of God? So he prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Ghost. Father, my prayer today is that every person under the sound of my voice will be able to now use the flip side of them that side that's been reserved for you God that side father that belongs to you that side father that's been sanctified by you that this world has not contaminated this world has not destroyed this world has not burnt this world has not hurt this world has not punctured this world has not wounded that side God is the Mehobrashtai yes God is the one that we minister to today father and we thank you in advance father because they need to receive the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit had not yet come upon any of them they had simply been baptized into the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John placed their hands on them and they received the Holy Spirit. They did what now? By the laying hands of the Presbyterian, according to the word of God, according to his word, Caroline family, the Presbyterian ought to be able to lay hands on you in order for you to receive the Holy Spirit. If there be no barriers, if there be nothing in your life of unbelief, if there be nothing, the Bible says that everybody's not going to receive it. Everybody, it says some receive. So if you've not received, then why don't we examine ourselves today and ask God the question, God, what is it on the inside of me that I have not received the Holy Ghost. The Bible says when Simon saw that the spirit was given at the laying on of the hands of the apostles, he offered them money and said, give me also the ability so that everyone on whom I lay my hands may receive the Holy Spirit. So he reverted back to him old self just for a minute. He went right back to who he used to be, the person of influence, the person of magic. He thought that maybe per adventure, this was some type of a magical thing that happened. Maybe per adventure, this is something supernatural that the abilities that he had all 
already. So he wants that as well. I want what you have also so that I can lay my hands on the people and they can receive the impartation of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says, Peter answered him, he said, may your money perish with you. You can't buy the Holy Ghost. You can't pip the Holy Ghost. Come on up in here. He said, because you thought that you could buy the gift of God with money, you have no part or share in this ministry because your heart is not right before God. So he reverted back to what he went back to his old self right once again. Who have been sent for this morning? Have we gone to Shemara back to our old selves? Are we now in our old stinking thinking again? Are we now going back to the person that we used to be lying, cheating and stealing? Uh, that flip side, that, that part that's been burnt by life, that part that's been mishandled, the part that's been disrespected, the part that's been mistreated, the part that has not been even um, allowed to be the real you, that you've just been in heart's way, in harm's way, you've been subjugated to penalties of law itself, uh, subjugated to the things that life has to offer you other than just being able to let God use the flip side of you. We're talking about this morning, the flip side of you. So he said that, listen, you you have no idea, uh, no part of how to share in this real ministry because your heart is not right before God. Repent of this wickedness and pray to the Lord and perhaps he will forgive you uh, of having such a thought in your heart. For I see that you are full of bitterness and captive to sin. So now he's showing him exactly that other side. He said, I see right now what you're dealing with. You've been in harm's way long enough. You've been in hardship. You've been in struggle. And so those things have caused you to be bitter in life. Who is it now that seems as if life has not treated you fair? Who is it now that seems as if that hard things happen to you, bad things happen to good people? I'm not a bad person. I don't understand why I have so much hardship. Don't understand why I have so much misery. Don't understand why I'm always not on top of my game while I'm one as if I, I, I don't bother with anybody. I don't mess with anybody. So why is it that I have to be the one that's subjugated to all of the penalties and pains of life? I've been sent for you this morning and don't you hang this telephone up. So he understood at that time he, he began to be sensitive for the man's needs. He said, I see that you're full of bitterness and you're captive to sin. Then Simon answered, he said, pray to the Lord for me so that nothing you have said may happen to me. So he recognized that he was using the old him. He recognized that he had reverted back to his old ways at that time so the man of God had what he had a discerning a gift of discernment he discerned the fact that what your struggle is I see now exactly what your struggle is I see now what it is that's captivated you I see now what has placed you in bondage I see now what your struggle is he recognized the struggle and the man said well, okay but then remember the Bible says that uh life and death is in the power of the tongue so he said now you spoke some words over me you telling me I'm for the bitterness bitterness and you telling me I'm captive to sin so now I'm going to pray that what you said won't happen to me. Have our prayer line this morning. Whenever someone says something detrimental to you, whenever someone says some words that will cause harm to you, <clears throat> you better learn how to counsel those words. Even though he was a man of God, amen, somebody, but he recognized, he said, well, now what you're saying now, I don't want that to happen in my life. So I'm going to counsel those words. I'm going to pray that what you're speaking over me, if it's negative, I don't want it to come to pass. So Simon said, well, now, now you pray to the Lord for me so that nothing that you just said is going to happen to me when they had testified and proclaimed the word of the lord peter and john returned to jerusalem preaching the gospels in so many samaritan villages so here they're going on doing exactly what they're supposed to do they're doing what god called them to do they're on the flip side of themselves they're on the part that god wants to use them they're on the part they're going to do the work that god wants them to do but here we find a man amen somebody that is now doing total opposite than what he should be doing Acts chapter nine, Acts chapter nine. Here we go. Here we go. Let's get some tea. Let's get some water. Uh, let's get something to drink and let's delve into the word of God this morning. We're talking about the flip side of you. So much of our bodies have been exposed to negative things. So much of us have been exposed to hardship, struggles, harm's way, divorce, breakups, mishaps, layoffs. Shall I revelate this morning? That's that part that's on that burner. That's that part that's in that frying pan and it hasn't been flipped over. It has, it, you're just still continuing over and over to overbake, overcook, overuse, have our prayer line this morning. But there's a part of you that has not hit the heat. Come on, you didn't flip the pancake yet, so the pancake that's on the top is still moist. It's come on up in here, have our prayer line. It is still moist. Amen, somebody. That egg, if you're not doing the uh, uh the over easy egg, it's still runny on the top. It's still hey man, somebody, because it has not been placed on the bottom yet, it has not been flipped over. So that's the part that we're gonna use, it's not been contaminated. That's the part that we're gonna use is still in. In his own containment, in his own right, in his own self. Have our prayer line this morning.
Amen. Father, we just stop and pause now and pray for a young lady that's missing named Kiera Adderley. Uh, we command it now, Satan, for you to take your filthy hands off of her. We command now even the ones, Father, that she's with. Uh, we expose the enemy right now. We command her to be able to communicate with her family. We pray, Father, that there will be no hurt, no harm or danger to this young person. We pray by the power of the Holy Ghost that you will send angels with drawn swords now to cut off the devices of the enemy, to cut off the wickedness that's been attached to her, Father. If there be any um, circumstances or situations in this family of discord. We ask, Father, that you'll bring the family back together, for we know that a house divided cannot stand. And so we interrupt Satan's plots. We interrupt his ploys right now. And we decree safety. We decree, Father, that she will not be in harm's way. We decree, Father, that she will communicate and will contact her family. We call it done this day. Satan, we serve you. Notice you have no authority over Kiara's life. We plead and apply the blood of Jesus over her. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Okay, so here we go using the flip side. Now we're using the flip side. We were looking in the book of, of uh, Acts chapter number nine. Acts chapter number nine. The Bible says that Saul was still breathing out murderous threats against the Lord's disciples. Here he is, that bad part of him. Here he is, the one that took pleasure in hurting someone, the one that took pleasure in seeing others being hurt, the one that took pleasure in seeing others uh, uh, mistreated and murdered and killed and maliciously. And he took pleasure in doing those things. So the Bible says he went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogues in Damascus. He said, now I want you to give me permission to go and torture the people of God even the more. I told you that God said the most three prevalent things that's going to be on this earth before Jesus Christ comes back. The three prevalent things on this earth is what the Saul spirit Saul spirit is what where Saul persecuted the church. The second most prevalent thing is uh, the Pharaoh spirit, where Pharaoh gave a command to kill off all the male seed, to kill off all the male seed. This is why your African Americans are being killed. And, 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 and come on, it, it is what it is. And then the third thing is the LGBTQ committee. Uh, those ones that gonna uh, uh, the the, the uh, transsexuals, the transgender, the bisexuals, the homosexuals, uh, uh, the those that have the voice of the land now. That if you say anything about them at all. All, then you're going to be persecuted. So those are the three most prevalent spirits and most forceful and powerful spirits that's going to be on this earth before Jesus Christ comes back to redeem our soul. So here Saul is carrying out his part. He's doing exactly what he's been called to do by Satan. He's persecuting the church. The Bible said he asked the, the, the permission from the priest so that I can go, amen to my, uh, give me a letter so I can go into these synagogues in Damascus so that I, that he found any there who belonged to the way, whether men or women, that he might take them in prison to Jerusalem. And as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. This one that had done what now? That side of him, that side of him that was vicious, that side of him that tormented people, that side of him that took pleasure in killing, that side of him that could care less about your mama, your daddy, your auntie, your uncle, you, anybody else. That side of him, amen, somebody that was vicious, that side of him that was a horrible, horrific person. So that person was who he was. But now, watch him, I feel the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that he, as he neared Damascus on his journey, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him and he fell to the ground and he heard a voice and say to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? So here it is, Jesus is addressing the other side of Saul. He's now addressing what? He's addressing the flip side of Saul. He's addressing that part that has not been contaminated. He's addressing that part. Amen, somebody. Come on up in here. I feel the Holy Ghost. He's addressing that part now that has nothing to do with that evilness, that has nothing to do with that persecuting person, that has nothing to do with that one that takes pleasure in hurting someone else. He addressed him on that part right there. He said, I'm talking to the other side of you. I'm talking to the one that has not been finagled in this life, the one that has not been messed up in this life life who have been sent for this morning. So he wants to address that part of you this morning. The part has not been exposed to the elements, the part who has not weakly and beggarly, the part of you has not been used and misused. God wants to address that part, the flip side of you. So he began to address the flip side of, of, of Saul. He said, well, why is it that you're persecuting me? He said, well, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. So if you didn't know who he was, how could you answer and address him as Lord? So we obviously know that God wants to do a work on the inside of us. We know for a fact 
when we feel change in our life. You, you, you know when things in your life are just not going right. And you know when most people always call it a something said. Something said or something told me. No, no, no. That, that's the spirit of God trying to introduce you to the real you. That's the spirit of God trying to prompt you and push you to a place where you don't call him something, but you recognize who he is. Saul recognized exactly who Jesus was because he said, who are you, Lord? Saul asked. He said, I am Jesus and whom you are persecuting. Don't you know that you continue to persecute Jesus the more we do uh, the, what devil wants us to do, the more we react to Satan, the more we stay in harm's way, the more we just continue to stay on that burner and, and don't allow God to flip us over to use the other side of us, that we're not so contaminated by life, that we're not so uh, disconnected from life. But when, when you continue to keep that pancake on that burner and you don't flip it over, what's going to happen? It's going to burn up and it's going to be used for, it will be good for nothing. Come on, it will be good for nothing. But your other side still is has what? It still has dough that has never hit the fire. It still has dough, amen, somebody, that has never been touched. It still has dough that you can still use and it will rise and it will do what it's supposed to do. But if you keep it on the burner, if you keep it on that same side that is overcooked, come on up in here, uh, it's going to be discarded because nobody wants to eat it. Nobody wants to have a part of it. Don't you know there's a part of you if you continue to roast yourself, continue to beat yourself up, continue to overcook yourself, people don't want to be associated with you they don't want to be bothered with you because you don't even like yourself i've been sent for you this morning and don't you hang this telephone up you do you like yourself this morning prayer line family do you really love yourself sister cheryl do you like yourself daughter sister tijuana do you like yourself this morning brother dennison do you really like yourself do we really love ourselves or do we just put on a misnomer to our own self Sister Veronica, do you love yourself this morning? Sister Brenda, do you really love yourself? Sister Stella, you love yourself, daughter. Pastor Bellamy, do you really love yourself this morning? Let's do a self-examination this morning. Do we really love ourselves this morning? Or are we just putting up with who we are? Are we just in this facade and this smoke screen of life that we're just passing through and we're just doing what's necessary to, to go ahead and get done with life itself? But are we really happy? Are we really pleased with who we really are? When you look in the mirror and you see yourself, do you say, well done, that good and faithful servant? Uh, do you say, oh, well, whatever. I've been sent for you this morning. The Bible says that the men traveling with Saul stood there speechless, that they heard the sound but did not see anyone. So Saul got up from the ground, but when he opened his eyes, he could not see anything. So they led him by the hand into Damascus. This is the flip side of him. Remember, the old Saul could see. The old Saul persecuted everybody, that burn up one, that burn up one. Come on. The one that embraced Satan's assignment, the one that tortured, tortured the church, the one that persecuted the church. He had sight. He had insight. He had intuitive. He had abilities, capabilities. He had all of those things, but he was overcooked. He was overdone. He was overwhelmed. He didn't understand there was another side of him, another part of him that had never been contaminated, another part of him that had compassion, another part of him that had love, another part of him that had understanding, another part of him that had wealth, another part of him that had success, another part of him that had nothing to do with failure, hardship, or any struggles in life. That other side. Yeah, that, that, that other side, that part. That's the part that God wants to use this morning on this prophetic prayer line. Have our prayer line this morning. So when we look at ourselves, are we really actually looking at the real us? Or are we looking at what this world and the environment has created us to be? Are we looking at what our teachers told us we were going to be? Are we looking at Abel Shai? Yes, God. Are we looking at what our parents said that we're going to be? Are we looking at the family curses and the generational curses and the stress and the struggles of life that put you such in a place that you're so bitter, you're so unhappy, and you push everybody away from you that really wants to help you? For you this morning, there are some people that God have assigned to your life to assist you, but because of bitterness, come on, because of hopelessness, because of situations in life that we continue to stay on that that one side. We're always on that one side. We never get flipped on the other side. Here the pancake is has to be done on both sides, but we're overdoing one side so much so that we're going to get discarded because it's burned up. You have no need for that. You've been burnt out. Come on, have our prayer line. I hear you, Holy Ghost. Uh, we've been burnt out. We've been burnt up. And so you're going to get discarded because people can smell the burning. They can smell the burning. You know when something's burning, you run to the stove, you run to the oven, you say, oh my God, it's overcooked. It's overdone. But guess what? 
On the flip side, amen, the top part is still not touched. The top part is still intact. It's still in place. It's still, uh, be, it, it still could be able to be used, but it has to have a balance in your life. You've got to have what now? Proud Life Family, we've got to have a balance in our life. So you've got to be able to use the flip side of you, the one that Satan has not contaminated, the one has not been exposed to the beggarly elements of life, the one who's not exposed to hardships and struggles and miseries and pain. You're there. You're there. You just got to know that the devil, the, the aim of the enemy, the scheme of the enemy is to overuse you. The aim and the scheme of the enemy is to abuse you, to mistreat you. So we stay right on that one side and never, ever letting the Holy Ghost flip us over to have a balance in our lives. We get overcooked, overdone. Come on. Have our prayer line. Mistreated, misused, abused. And we just stay right there on that one side and never, ever get flipped. On the other side. So you have no balance in your life. Watch him. I hear the Holy Ghost. Bible says that here he is. Nobody saw this thing but him, but the others heard it. And so when God is talking to you, it tells you to get flipped on the other side. They're not going to hear when God tells you it's time for you to come out of Pharaoh's job, own your own business, be your own CEO, uh, write your own paychecks. They didn't hear that. Uh, the Bible says that they heard the sound, but they didn't see anyone. They saw no one. There was nobody there but you and God when God gave you your assignment. I don't care how many people are around you. I don't know how you, you ask about did you Did you see that? See what? I didn't see nothing. See what? Did you see that? See what? I didn't see anything. What you see? That's for you and for you only. God's not going to expose the plans he has for you to anyone else. He said, I know the thoughts and the plans that I have for you in the book of Jeremiah, Jeremiah 29, 11. He only knows that. So he's going to do what? He's going to only minister to you. He's going to only tell it to you. They may hear something around you, but they're not going to see the vision that God has given you. But the vision is for you and for you only. Nobody else is going to see your vision, Sister Samaria. They're not going to know exactly what God has for you. They're not going to know your assignment because the assignment has been meant for you. You and you only. And so now Saul got it from off the ground. But when he opened his eyes, he couldn't see anything. Sometimes God has to blind us to protect us. Sometimes God has to blind us in order to protect us because we are people of habits and we're so habitually uh, uh, readily uh, to do what we've done before, that when God tries to redirect us because of the habits that we formed in life, we're going to go back and do the same things we've done before. We're going to continue repetitively, do the same behaviors, do the same things, be around the same people, the same community, the same neighborhood, the same jobs, the same tasks. We're going to continue to do it. So he said, now I'm going to do what? I'm going to take your safe from you so that I can redirect you. I'm going to take away, hallelujah, the things that you're so familiar with in order to give you something different, in order for change to come to your life. So he took the sight, amen, somebody, when he opened his eyes, he could see nothing in order for God to infiltrate the other side of him, in order for this other side now to have a balance in his life. The Bible says for three days he was blind and did not eat or drink anything. We, we know in biblical uh, teachings that we know the three days are symbolic to the time that Jesus uh, spent in the grave. We, we understand usually anytime it's a three, a God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy ghost. That's a des description. Amen. Somebody type and shadow of the spirit of God of the spirit of Christ. So we know that Christ had three days in the grave. And so this is a type and shadow for three days is symbolic of what God is doing for change to the atmosphere, for change to the world, for change to the universe. And so this thing was going to change in Saul's life for the rest of his life. For three days, he was blind and he did not eat or drink anything. So not only did God cause him to have a, a, no, a, a new vision, a no vision for a while, but he also took the very appetite of who he was. God did a work on the inside of this man. He said, now I'm going to blind you so that you're not going to be who you used to be. So you're going to see in a different direction. You're going to have an understanding in a different way, but then I'm going to also put you on a fast. The Bible said he didn't eat. The Bible said that these some of these things come but by fasting and praying there was a strong man there was a stronghold in Saul's life so much so that God had to cause him to have uh, blindness so much so that he took the very appetite away from him so much so that God can now show him the flip side of him so he had to get rid of the strongholds he had to get rid of those things come on up in here he had to get rid of those things that had now taken residency in his life that took a precedence in his life so God said I'm going to remove these things away from you I'm going to take you out of a natural state of mind and a natural state of life and i'm going to introduce you something to us totally different i'm going to introduce you to the flip side of you i've been sent for you this morning and don't you hang the telephone up so here he was now blinded for three days didn't eat for three days because god did a work on him y'all remember when god sent manna from heaven 
Remember when the children of Israel were delivered out of bondage from uh, Egypt, God calls them what? He said, I'm going to give you something that you've never had before. Isn't it strange how if God were to take your sight away from you, uh, such as what was so comfortable, Sister Michelle, when we were all, uh, everybody's going to work every day and you're getting your little paychecks every day. And now all of a sudden you get on this road to Damascus. All of a sudden now Jesus comes in your life and it, it, and it disrupts your life, interrupts it, and you're natural and your natural is no longer natural. This is what's happening right now in life. These things that you're so accustomed to and the things that we're so uh, used to doing, uh, they're not there any longer. So now this road to Damascus experience that we're all on right now, it ought to be able for us now to get off the burner get off the nine to five job get off the going on the highways each and every day uh driving an hour to work an hour back away from home from work and, and getting overwhelmed overworked overused underpaid shall i revelate so god says now that you're on this road so why don't you now listen to me why don't you now listen to me lest i jack you up lest i take your vision lest i put you on a fast and cause you to become who you already are i want to use the flip side of you i don't want to use the side that's been aggravated by life. I don't want to use the side of you that's been aggrieved by life. I don't want to use the side of you that's been hurt, that's been mistreated, that's been oppressed and depressed. He said, there's a side of you that's never been exposed. There's a side of you that never hit. Come on up in here, the skillet on the other side. That's the part that God wants to use this morning. So the Bible says that here he was, <clears throat> He was blinded for three days and he didn't eat for three days and, and didn't drink for three days because God, God did a work on the inside. The same as such as he did for the children of Israel when he sent manna from heaven and he gave them something they never had before. In this pandemic, if we could really see God in this as well, uh, the same as his word says, he does things totally different. Uh, he does things in, in, in life that, that seem to be uh, amazing. Uh, but it could be God. I'm not saying the pandemic came from God. Don't hit me with your flesh. I'm not saying that. This is a man-made monstrosity, a mess that they made in this world. But what I'm saying is God will take advantage of the opportunity. He'll take advantage of the opportunity. Saul was on the road to Damascus and Jesus took advantage of the fact of where he was going. He took advantage to meet him right where he was on that path. So where we are right now, Jesus will take advantage of the situation and meet you where you are. He'll take advantage of the situation to minister to you, to let you know, don't you go back to the old you. Don't go back to the old lifestyle. Don't go back on that burner where you've been overcooked, overrode, come on up and underpaid underrecognized and you're still yet right in that same pace in that same position and the fire is still there you're still on the burner you're still on the stove you're still overcooking you're burning up burning up burning up i've been sent for you this morning and he said you've got to understand that redundant behavior is not going to change unless you allow it to change so now he meets you where you are wants to flip you over but yet we're still resisting what jesus wants to do we still resist the fact that maybe change has come to our life maybe peradventure you are overwhelmed maybe peradventure you have been overlooked over work underpaid and so now he said but the top of you come on i can still see uh hallelujah i can still see that the, the top of you that's not even been touched that's not contaminated the top of the pancake is still dough it's still dough that needs to be flipped over to bring a balance in your life the bible says in damascus there was a, dis a disciple by the name of ananias the lord called him in a vision he said, Ananias, he said, yes, Lord, he answered. He said, the Lord told him, go to the house of Judas on Straight Street and ask a man for, uh, from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. And in a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. Now, here we go. Here we go. Here comes a plan. Here comes a plot. God always has a plot. God always has a plan. So here this man is now. For three days, he blind, didn't eat or didn't drink. Here we are now, pandemic, March, April, May, June, July, five months, five months going on now. Uh, everybody doesn't see very well. Everybody's in a myth. They're in a fog. They don't understand what's going on. And so now, uh, because your money is funny and your change is strange and you don't know what's going on. So now maybe peradventure, uh, some of us are not eating like we would. Uh, maybe we're not drinking like we have been. We're not doing what we're accustomed to do because things have been cut back. And it's on a recession, so to speak. And so then God has someone uh, that he's ministering to about you in your situation. 
Don't you know that God always has a plan? The Bible said that he has a ram in the bush. Remember when he sent Abraham to, to kill his son? He said, I want you to sacrifice your son uh, Isaac and I want you to put him on this thing and I want you to kill him. And so Abraham, because of his obedience to God, he was taking that son and he said, well, daddy, daddy, where are we going? He said, don't worry about his son. We're just going to do some things for God. Don't worry about the kid. Just come on. And so because he was obedient, the Bible says, if you're willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. So he now had a plan. He had a ram in the bush, but Abraham was willing to sacrifice his son. As soon as he got ready to draw the staff to that son to kill him, the ram made a noise in the bush. And we know the ram is a type and shadow of the lamb. The ram is what now? The ram is a type, the type and shadow of the lamb. Jesus is the lamb. He was a sacrifice for humanity. So this particular instance right here, the ram represented the life of Jesus. And the ram was going to be the sacrifice so that Abraham didn't have to sacrifice his son Isaac. God has a plan. He always has a plan. He had a plan for Saul at this time. He said, Ananias, look at him. I'm doing a work on the inside of this young man right now. The Lord called him in a vision. He did what now? He called him in a vision. He said, I want you to uh, go to the house of Judas on a street called Straight. Have we ever been on a straight street, y'all? Are we still in the detours? Are we still in the trenches? Are we still in the mess? Are we still in Broke Lane? Come on up in here. Uh, are we still in Hazard Avenue? Uh, where are we now? He said, well, I'm calling to a street called Straight. To ask for a man named Tarsus, from a man from Tarsus named Saul, for he is praying. See, even when Saul got in the situation, he learned how to pray. Even when he couldn't kill any longer, couldn't destroy any longer, couldn't mistreat anybody any longer, couldn't make anybody's lives miserable any longer, because God introduced him to the flip side of him. He said, that's not you. That's not your nature. That's not who you're really supposed to be. You're only doing what you've been introduced to do. You're only responding to what you've been introduced in life. I've been sent for you this morning. Sometimes we respond to the hands that's been dealt us, but sometimes all we got to do is put the hand in, throw that hand in and say, I don't want this hand. Give me another hand. Deal me another other hand. I am not miserable. I am not broke. I've been sent for you. I am not in harm's way. I am not lonely. I'm not upset. I'm not miserable. I'm not broke. But because life introduces you to those things, then you stay on that same area. You stay on that same playing ground. You stay on that same side. When God said, I'm trying to flip you to another side. I want to show you who you really are. And so you don't understand who you really are because you've been manipulated. You've been captivated. You've been used up. You've been burnt up. Have I been sent for you this morning? So we've now been burned up by life, been used up by life, and we don't understand where life is trying to take us. And God's trying to redirect every aspect of your life, trying to take you to a new place and you refuse to go. So the Bible said he had to now talk to someone else and say, I've got him praying, but I need you. Come on. I need you to go talk to this man. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias come and place his hands on him to restore his sight. God was so precise and he was so specific at what he told the both of them. He had, first of all, he had shown Saul, this is what's going to happen, but he had to do what? He had to dismiss his old lifestyle. He had to dismiss his old pattern. He had to dismiss his old stinking thinking. He took the vision away from him so he would not go in his own intuitions. He would not go in his own involvement in anything. He said, now I'm going to put you to a place where you got to trust me. You got to believe in me. You got to hope in me. You're not going to do this on your own and you're not going to do it by yourself. So I'll take all of those things away from you come on up in here so that I can personally minister to you. God got his attention. Has God got your attention this morning, Prayer Life family? He got Saul's attention so much so that he took his vision away, so much so that he took his appetite away. He couldn't eat, he couldn't drink. He said, now I can minister to you. Now I can talk directly to you. I've been sent to you this morning and don't you hang this telephone up. I've been sent for you. So he said, I've got your attention now. So guess what? Now I'm going to tell you what's going to happen in your life. I'm going to tell you what's going to happen next. So Saul, in a dream, he saw, amen, somebody. He, he said, I gave him a vision too. In a vision, he has seen a man named Ananias. He specifically showed him exactly who it is, amen, somebody, that's going to help you. He came and placed his hands on him to restore his sight. He saw, he allowed Saul to see everything before it happened. Lord Ananias answered, he said, I have heard many reports about this man and all the harm that he has done to your saints in Jerusalem. I heard about the flip side of Saul. I heard about that bad part of him. I heard about how nasty he is, how detestable he is, how horrible he is, how horrific he is, how upset he is with himself because he doesn't see himself in the mirror. He sees his environment. He sees the ingrained things that's been taught to him. He sees how to punish people. He sees how to hurt people. Hurting people hurt people, y'all. 
hurting people hurt people. And he said, I've heard about this man, how he harms people, how he's done to your saints in Jerusalem. And he has come here with authority from the chief priest to arrest all who call on your name. But the Lord said to Ananias, flip him over, flip him over, <laughs> flip him over. God wants to flip you over this morning, prayer life family. Flip him over because there's a part of him that's not been tainted. Flip him over because there's a part of him that's not overcooked. Flip him over because there's a part of him that's not hurt, harmful, burnt up, used up. Flip him over. But the Lord said to Ananias, go. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel. Understand and recognize that you are the one. You're the one that God wants to use this morning, prayer life family. You're the one that God has a power on the inside of you that has never been used before. You're the one that God wants to introduce your family to Jesus Christ. You're the one that God wants to use on that job, hallelujah, that task. You're the one that God wants to use. He said, go, this man is chosen as he's a chosen instrument to carry my name you are a chosen instrument to carry the name of the lord jesus christ through this pandemic through this pandemonium through this horrid horrific corona you're the one you're the one hallelujah i hear you holy ghost you're the one that no hurt harm or danger is going to come to because god has handpicked you through the fire through the furnace in the furnace of affliction god chose you in this furnace of affliction right now the things that are going on in life right now the horrible upset things that everybody pretty much all y'all probably got the mess. Amen. Come on up in here. If truth be told, if truth be told, if everybody got tested, I'm sure that everybody probably been exposed to this stupid mess that's going on in this world and they just don't want to tell it. Have our prayer life. But because you've been chosen as instrument to carry out God's name before the Gentiles and their kings and before the people of Israel, I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Oh, Lord, I hear your Holy Ghost. I hear your Holy Ghost. I'll show him what now? I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. Mm, mm, mm. Watch him. Here he come. Watch him. Here he come. Then Ananias went to the house and entered in. So here he is following God's instructions. How many of us actually follow God verbatim? How many of us second guess God, Sister Charlene and and never really do what we're supposed to do and we come up with our own conclusions about things. And come on, we, we, we always trying to do something ourselves, but God has already told us what to do. He said, now I want you to go and go to this house, placing his hands on Saul. He did what now? He placed his hands on Saul. He flipped him over. He said, but you've been used enough, man. You've been abused enough. You've been in hardship long enough. You've been oppressed, depressed. You've been afflicted. You've been bipolar. You've been schizophrenic. Have our prayer line this morning. You've been an alcoholic. You've been a drug addict. You've been a whore. You've been an adulteress. You've been a liar. You've been a cheater. All of those things on that one side over there. You held all those things in so long. You've been overwhelmed, overworked, overcooked, overdone. Come on. All of that on that one side of you, but there's another side of you that has not been contaminated. There's another side of you that is not toxic. There's another side of you that wants to have a productive life. The Bible says, so here he is. He went to the house. He entered in, placing his hand on Saul. He said, boy, look at hell, look at hell. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus, who appeared to you on the road as you were coming here, has sent me to say that you may has sent me so that you may see again and be filled with the Holy Spirit. You've got to be filled with the Holy Ghost, Paraline. You must be filled with the Holy Ghost. The Bible says immediately something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he could see again. He got up and he was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. I've come to feed you this morning with the word of God. Yes, God, I've come to implement righteousness and holiness in your life. I've come to flip you over from that side, that side been overused, overwhelmed, overworked, underpaid. Come on up in here. I've been sent for you this morning. And don't you hang this telephone up. I've been sent to introduce you to the real you. The Bible said he got up and he was baptized. And after taking some food, he regained his strength. Taste this food in this morning. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. And his mercy endures for all time. Take and digest this word of God this morning. He said he will withhold no good thing for those that walk upright. He that walk upright, God will know, withhold no good thing from you. And we're in that place right now. The flip side of you. Go. This man is chosen. This man is my chosen instrument to carry my name throughout the entire world. Flip him over. 
because I want to use the other side of him. I want to bring a balance to his life. I want him to know that he doesn't have to live in harm's way. I want him to know that they don't have to be broke, busted, disgusted, can't be trusted. I want them to know that you don't have to be used and manipulated by people. You don't have to be overlooked, overworked, and underpaid. You don't have to live that lifestyle. We must learn to know and understand and recognize that we have to live a lifestyle that's conducive to our salvation. You got to live a lifestyle that's conducive to your king, the, the covenant relationship that we have with God. And so Saul was one that God chose because everybody knew his lifestyle. Everybody had heard of his reputation. Everybody had heard of the horrific things that he had done. Folk know who you were. You, you, they know that you were a leg sprouter. Come on up in here. They know that you were that person, uh -huh, that part. They know who you were. So when God comes in and interrupt who you were because you were burnt out, because you refused to get flipped over, because it was only one part of you that has been exposed to this world. So God says, now nah, I want to balance your life. I want to bring a balance in your life. And I want you to show that you don't have to live that way. You don't have to live that way, family. You don't have to live that way. God has someone uh, on your mind right now. God has you on someone's mind. Ananias, listen to him. That, that's the problem nowadays, though. The problem I find, it, it doesn't, it's not because God isn't telling people. They just don't listen. Somebody that has your assignment in their life, sometimes they don't listen. And it's not because you're not deserving. It's not because it's not your time. It's because the people that God wants to use, sometimes they're the ones that are hard-headed. They're the ones that, that, that won't listen to God. So now they have your blessings locked up in their disobedience. And is God going to hold you accountable for that? No. No, it's just a delay. But delay doesn't mean denied. So he'll go to the next person. He said, well, I gave you that assignment and you didn't listen. So guess what? Now there are repercussions for them that not listen to God. They have repercussions as well because they're disobedient to what God has. God has blessings in someone else's hand for you. God has a, a, a places that you need to go, but someone else is responsible for opening that door for you. But if they don't listen to God, amen, then you're not going to have that opportunity from that person. But he said, I got a ram in the bush. Remember when he told Isaac to take, I mean, when he told Abraham to take your son Isaac up there and, and go ahead and kill him and make him a sacrifice. And, and Abraham was willing to do that because the obedience is better than the sacrifice. But because God saw that he was willing and obedient, then that's when he was able to eat the good of the land because he was willing to give up his own in order for him to obey God. What are we willing to give up this morning, prayer line family, in order to obey God? Are we willing to give up everything in life that we know of in order to serve God? Uh, do we have to have this road to Damascus experience and take us off of that horrific ride that we've been in our life? Overburned, overwhelmed, overworked, overcooked, underdesired, underpaid, underrecognized, and yet now everybody can smell us burning. We can smell the aroma throughout the entire house. We can smell it down the street. But when there's just something on fire, you can smell that fire from a long way. You can smell something's burning. What's that? Something's burning. Something's burning. Something's burning. What's that? Something's burning. What is it? Is it you? Is it you being overcooked? Is it you? Come on. That's on that same burner and never been able to been flipped. But remember, we're talking about the pancake. And on the top part that's never been flipped, it's still dough. It's still liquid. And it needs to be flipped in order for you to have a balance in your life. In order for you not to be overwhelmed, overcooked, overdone, and then fit for nothing. And nobody wants to use you. So it's burned up. It's up. Throw it out. Discard it. Get rid of it. Who would have used this man named Saul in the natural? Who would have chosen anybody that's actually doing just the opposite to make them do something that you want them to do? He did just the opposite to God's people. He, he persecuted them. He killed them. So why would God want to use that person? Well, first of all, because he was bold. First of all, he had the tenacity to, 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 try, to try to do harm. And so God will take that foolish things to confound the wise. He said, well, okay, you're just trying to do all this harsh stuff. Let me come and use use all those gifts for me. It's just like a, a drug dealer. The person out there dealing drugs obviously have pharmaceutical skills. Obviously have skills to create, to motivate. They're very energetic. They spend long hours out there. They spend a lot of time at their craft and they have influence over people. So there are some accreditations to everything that you do. Uh, negative, good, bad, or indifferent. And so you've got to see the positive aspect of everything in life. you got to see the positive. Drug dealers are still folk. They're still folk. They're entrepreneurs. They're pharmaceut pharmacists uh, in disguise. They met somebody. They, 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 they distribute drugs the same as a, 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 a pharmacist does. So they're, they're pharmaceuticals. But they have the wrong connotation behind it. So they need to be flipped over and utilize the be better part of them and a better way of doing that, and a legal way of doing it, legal way. Well, you know, the government, drug dealers now, so what's the difference? What, what's the difference? They're distributing now cannabis 
uh, with the medical card and all of that. What's the difference in the young boy on the corner that you're going to lock up for 30 years, but you, you government, you do it because you get the money. It's okay. Okay, Saul. And so when God flipped him over, not only did his whole lifestyle change, but his name changed also. He wasn't known as the persecutor of the church any longer. He was known as what? A man, my chosen instrument. He was known as God's chosen instrument at that time. I want you to know who you are in God today, this morning, Paraline family. And I want you to know that you are a chosen instrument for God. I want you to know that all the finagling, the hardships and the struggles that we've had in life, uh, those things are just the making of a master's peace. Uh, they're the making of what now? They're the making of a master's peace. You have to understand and recognize that God has this canvas called life. And on this canvas, he's painted a big, beautiful portrait. And all of us has a splash somewhere in life. You could be an orange. You could be a purple. You could be a gray. You could be a green, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we all have a part on this canvas. And you've got to know exactly where you are, where you fit on the canvas, and what part of you in this canvas. Are you one of the ones that's now that's been on the um, the backwoods of the burner that's been really seeking God's face and, and not really bothering anybody and you're not really hurting anyone, but it seems as if uh, bad things happen to good people all the time and you don't understand why? Uh, because God is seizing you for a time as this. He's, he's making you in that master's peace. And as soon, uh, very soon, you're going to see the bigger picture. Soon and very soon, you're going to recognize yourself on the all life. You're going to be able to identify yourself. And when you go to the mirror this time, you're going to like the person that you see in that mirror. You're going to love that person that you see in the mirror. You're not going to see what your mom said if it was nasty words. You're not going to see what your dad said if they were hurtful words. You're not going to see what your... Um, professors said or your teachers said or your friends said you're going to see what God has to say about you and God says what now God says that you're my chosen instrument and that's what you're going to see over your foreheads from this day on that's what you're going to see when you look in that mirror I am somebody I'm God somebody I'm a royal priesthood I'm an ambassador for Christ I'm fearfully and wonderfully made greater is he that's in me than he that's in this world that's who you're going to see you're not going to see those hardships you're not going to see that divorce you're not going to see those struggles you're not going to see the resistance of life you're not going to see your faith. You're not going to see disappointments. You're not going to see hardships. You're not going to see struggles. You're not going to see those things. Because when God blinds you for these three days and takes your appetite and causes you not to be able to eat or drink, then you're going to know exactly who you are. How to become who you already are. That's what God wants to do. Our God, our Father, I pray that I came in simplicity in the book today. I pray, Father, that I've really introduced your people to the flip side of them. But there's a part of us, Father, that's been overused overwhelmed, discarded, disdained, burnt up, burnt out, just been charred and just been used up and ready to be just thrown away and discarded because the smell and the stench of the burn has now come into the nostrils of so many people around us. And so they don't want to be around us. They don't want to uh, put anything in us. They don't want to put an investment that like we're washed up, that we've been used, contaminated, toxic. And so they just want to just dismiss us and get rid of us. But God, you said on the top of us, it's never been touched. The top of us, God, has never been used, never been introduced to the fire, never been introduced to the heat. So we have to now use the flip side of us and cause that balance to happen in our lives. That we're now the objective of hurt and harm and hardships that won't, it won't be the main thing in our lives and struggle won't be the main things in our lives that won't be so overwhelming. And so, Father, that balance that you come now, that when we come to that place in our lives, God, that you'll have someone that can speak life. You'll have someone that can identify with our struggle, someone that can release every aspect of hardship and struggles and and and, 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 and it's just the old nasty, detestable things of life, that they can release us from those things. And that we can see ourselves in a more sure way, in a way that we see ourselves through the eyes of God. I pray, Father, that the simplicity of today, Father, took root on the inside and people will have a real understanding by just simple analogies, just plain old pancake on the stove, plain old cake in the oven, just simple to God that just flip it over, plain old uh, a sunny side up egg, God, that it's cooked on one side, but it's still yet running on the outside. It's still the yolk has not even been broken. It's still right there. It can be used. So Father, I pray I pray by the Holy Ghost and the Spirit of God to come on the inside and infiltrate every negative thought, every negative aspect of life and cause us to have hope and that more abundantly in this life. God, I thank you in the, in the natural and I praise you in the spirit. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. and Amen. God bless you. God bless you. Why don't you sow seeds in the word today, family? This is a powerful word this morning. It really is. Uh, God said, make it so to hear it and they can have an understanding of it. It's like a cookie that's being baked. You see on the bottom of the cookie. Cookie is dark, cookie is real, real browned, overcooked on the bottom. But when you're looking at the top, the cookie is rising. It's, 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 it's rising and it, it's, it has nothing to stop it. And it meets its potential. 
God wants you to meet your potential this morning, Prayer Life family. You just got to be willing for him to flip you over and it cause a balance in your life and use it hold, hold you rather than being overused on one side, overcooked on one side and discarded. And But yet, that's still good, didn't you? There's still something left that's great on the inside of you. There's still greatness on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Well, this is the devil busting, the demon chasing, the woman, the wisdom and the word. Dr. Loretta B. Harris, Moses with a skirt on. I'll grow you up if you let me. I'll grow you up if you let me. I love you with the love of Jesus Christ and the thing that devil can do about it. This is Roosevelt's daughter. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Live fully and live freely. In Jesus name we pray. Don't forget. Uh, like and share the page. Social media, please like and share the page. YouTube, uh, Facebook, please like and share the page. God bless you. We'll see you tomorrow morning. God bless. This is the fully live free in Jesus' name. We pray. Share the page. God bless. God bless. Love you, family. God bless you.